What's up everybody? Welcome back to my single player uh well experience, my single player experience. Now I got some good news and some bad news. The good news is um I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to make somewhat of a perpetual energy well there's no such thing as perpetual energy as I'm gonna be wasting one uh well some resources and stuff like that, but um in the last few episodes I was kinda showing you guys how I was gonna be bringing in um, lava cells into my geothermal generators here in this world but it's a uh, the problem with that is that I have to go to the nether every time for that and it's just it's gonna be a pain in the ass but what I did figure out is that this little amulet that I made the volcanic amulet uh, will actually make lava source blocks for me so here I'll just dig out this with my picky I just ignore that but when you use it, it, it fucking uses, I'm, I'm cursing, I'm, I apologize, it uses energy out of my client star here to make uh, lava source blocks. So I thought to myself, I was like, well, why can't I just do that, set this up with an automated system, and uh, not have to go to the nether, in which I did do this, I was able to do this, and um, about 18 hours of experimenting and stuff later, I realized... Okay, I need to I need to record this because I want to show everybody this so they can see how to do it themselves. And I had this whole contraption behind this place all set up. And then when I logged out to uh, to start recording, my 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 save got corrupted. I'd show you now, but I have to shut down Minecraft and everything like that. But it basically, it just didn't load uh, half of the chunks in my little area here. So. When I logged back into my world, I was being suffocated, and I was, oh, what's this? What's what's all this going? You know, and um, basically everything from this lily pad right here, that way in the world, was just gone. I this was still carved out. I still had my portal to my Nether. I still had even this here with my coal dust in it and everything like that. It's just these chunks right past here, all corrupted and got reset back to the year, dear, uh, their original positions and stuff like that and from the looks of it I don't even have my system set up yet for these yeah wait no I have a hole dug here hmm maybe I do then I'm not I'm not 100% sure I should have like access to like 20,000 blocks of cobble through this yeah 20k okay so it looks like I still have access to that. I, I thought I dug through this wall though. Maybe I'm thinking of downstairs because I spent so much time down here. Yeah, I'm thinking of this area right here. But uh, anyways, we're going to be, um, or I'm going to show you guys about that. I'm also really sad because uh, I found uh, the blaze spawner, which I've shown you guys over in the nether. Um, let me get my freaking shovel out for this. Uh, which I, I loved. It was It's fantastic. In fact, exploring that stronghold a little bit further, I found another blaze spawner in somewhat, I don't know, probably about 15 blocks away. And it was awesome because I just connected both of them and I made myself a dark matter sword, which I'm going to have to do again. Um, I'll wait until this one's done. But... Um, it was it was fantastic. I figured out that you can just press R on the dark matter sword, and I assume it uses EMC, and um, it would just basically do like this AOE effect, and kind of hit everything in the general vicinity. And uh, actually, I'm a little happy that I get to redo this because I had to move my battery box, my MFE here, which I didn't like having to do. In fact, I might actually still have to do it because it's too close to this. I gotta run. Oh, I gotta run two pipes under both of these. And um, it's going to want to connect to this. And uh, I don't want that, so I'm going to have to move it anyways. I'd, I guess it would be easier for me to move my generators than actually move this, because I don't want to lose my 600,000 energy units in there. But anyways, what we're going to be doing is basically using... Uh, we're going to use this amulet. It's going to create two source blocks of lava... And it's going to have its own client star. I'm going to put it in, and it's going to be in a deployer. And uh, a pump's going to be hooked up to it. It's going to pull it out. I'm going to go grab my bottler from the nether, bring it in here. And um, basically, it's going to request uh, cells 
from my system here and um, it'll keep the bottler um, supplied with uh, with cells as it creates uh, lava cells and those lava cells will go directly into my, my generators here and it was all set up to where I could turn it on and off and uh, it was so good I was so proud of myself because most of the time like almost everything here is kind of based off of ideas from dire wolf which is not a bad thing because it, it works and it, it makes sense to me so I, I don't see a problem in using his ideas and um, in fact, if you guys end up using my ideas from or my idea for for this, I fucking by all means go for it. Uh, I was really proud of it. It worked really well. Um, I kind of had it in a very this about this this size right here, and I had the the walls blocked off to kind of make it a little bit nicer looking. Um, but yeah, now that uh. Now that I can, I know what I'm going to be doing. I can kind of rearrange things because I don't really need to have access to these these generators anymore. I just need those generators providing power into my MFE. So I'll probably move those, and then um, I'm a little sad that this still has to finish up. Oh, it's kind of it's almost done. Awesome. Okay, so that's not too bad. So that's going to be finished. I still got to figure out a better solution for this because. I obviously can't have my pipes like this, you know. Especially if I want to put more machines down the line of this uh, cable or cut uh, freaking fiber. But anyways, let's. Uh, first step of this is actually I still want to get some blaze rods, mainly because uh, I need them to make ender chests, and ender chests are still going to be very useful for me. So uh, let's go to the Nether. Go hang out a bit, and in fact, I'm not actually streaming this time around, which I think is gonna it's 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 less distracting, which is is nice to me, um, because while I'm streaming, I'm I'm paying attention to people in the stream and not really what I'm doing, and that's not really fair for the people who watch these on YouTube afterwards. So actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna let that finish out because if I'm gonna be getting blaze rods, I might as well let this finish out its uh its session. But then we're going to take all this junk and we're going to move on to, uh, or move it over to the overworld. But first I want to show you guys, um, the blaze spawner thing that, uh, if I go the right direction maybe. And, uh, this right here, my little ring of ignition and my, uh, what is it, the swift wolf's rending gale. Two of the best freaking things I've ever made because it just... First off, it makes you immune to fire, and it even puts out fire when you get close to it. And it makes you immune to lava, which is amazing. So basically, you're invincible in the nether. And it's just, it's, <laughs> it's game-breaking, really. In fact, it's going to make collecting freaking glowstone dust a breeze now. Um, but I'm going to show you guys what's going down over here. Now, this is going to be reverted back to my old setup right here. Which is, it's not a good setup, let's just be honest, this is a wall and I got a hit from there or whatever, but now, blazes don't hurt. Watch, this guy's gonna shoot me soon, even though I kinda dodged it. He's gonna keep shooting, I mean, you guys will see that it'll hit eventually. There you go, see? Those would've hit me, I didn't catch on fire, it's no big deal. The only time that these guys actually hurt me now is when they're actually touching me. So, see, there you go. When I actually run into them is when I get hurt. But it makes killing them real easy, you know? So I just hollowed out this whole area and let them come in. And after the sword breaks, I'll show you how awesome the uh, the Dark Matter sword is. Um, but I had this giant room. It was all pretty and, like, it was set up really nice. And the other blaze spawner is about 20 blocks this way in that direction. And um, we'll definitely be digging into there to, to get into it because... With two spawners, this whole place is just crawling with blazes, and I came out of here with two stacks of blaze rods in maybe 20 minutes, if that. Um, it all depends, because sometimes they get stuck in the ground and everything like that, but uh, I'm going to spend some time hollowing out this area and killing these blazes as they come by, and uh, I'll come back when I get down to the other spawner, which you guys can probably hear them down there doing their thing but I'm just gonna go off in this little area this general direction here whoa see a whole bunch spawned and as long as I don't 
let them touch me, and they kind of go in a left circle like um, skeletons do. Like, uh, they just keep going like this all the way around. Um, well, I guess left in my general direction, but they're actually going right. Um, so as long as I stay away from them, I'll be fine. I'm really not worried. I got food. I got, uh, I got a bunch of bread. Which I should, uh, actually eat some. There we go, get some of my health back. But yeah, I'll see you guys after I connect these two. And, um show you how awesome this place can be okay so uh, we're finally here and as you can see this is the room where there's just a ton of them in and I'm literally it's this this far that's this is where I was in fact I didn't even really have to cut if I didn't want to but um, this is uh, this is where those boys are it's right here so for those of you who are playing on this world there's your coordinates right there of the nether. Pretty cool. But see, basically what I did was come in here and, um, man, there's a lot of fire here. I blocked off their, uh, their way out. Oh, God damn it. See, they're all trying to get at me. But it's so easy. I also, I, I forgot that I had like 40 some odd levels of experience too. Um, I was very, very happy to have all of that in my life. But now I gotta do it all again, which isn't a terrible thing. I mean, it's not like they're hard to kill. And uh, now I get to make my Dark Matter sword. So let's actually uh, show you how that's made. So for Dark Matter sword, you need two Dark Matter and a Diamond Hilt. Uh, it's not actually made with wood because I guess it's just too good for that. So here we go. Dark Matter Sword. I mean, get off of me, bro. Let's eat some bread so we're regaining health. Um, the Dark Matter Sword can actually be charged up just like uh, a bunch of other things. So let me actually block off this area. They're wanting to go that way a lot. Um, oh. Why did I? I don't know why I took that. I took the ring off of my hot bar. That's why I was burning up. Um, that was a stupid mistake on my part. But you can press V, charge it up, and uh, whack him down. But the the best thing of it, in fact, I'm going to um, to block off their path here now, and we'll come back this way actually. Um, go down here and see. I'm not even looking at him, right? Press R, and it does like this little knockback, but it's AOE. So I just go up to all these guys and hit R, and it'll kill them all for me. And it's just, it's so, so nice. Especially in this giant room full of blazes. Blazies. I don't know, however you want to pronounce it. I'm going to use my pickaxe. Don't, don't yell at your screen. Everything is on purpose. There we go. We blocked that off. So they can't go back there. And, um... Basically, I'm trying to force them into my other area because I don't want them to run away or anything like that. I just want them to go up to one little chute and uh, that be it. Okay, there we go. So this room is now connected to this one over here. I'm going to actually get rid of this little step because they don't need it. They, they fly. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the R skill on this uses EMC from my Klein Star, but with the second tier one, you have 250,000, uh, or not 250,000, but 200,000 rather, EMC. And uh, it's not easy to burn through that, uh, unless you're down here for hours and hours without recharging your EMC. So everything costs something, but it's no big deal. We fly up here. And we say hello to our friends, hit R a few times, and just watch them all die. So I think I came in here with, what, like nine bars of experience, I think? And uh, I'm already at 16. Almost 17. Like, almost 17 on the dot, really. And um, if I really wanted to, I could have blocked off this area as well and have like a gate here so they all get stuck in here. Uh, which isn't a bad idea. In fact, let's just... Uh, block off a little area like right here so it's kind of it's a little bit harder for them to get out 
we'll do it like that. Um, so they really have to kind of get into this little hole to get out, which shouldn't be too hard for them, honestly. Um, let me just get out of here real quick and see if... Uh, I don't have any wood. I was going to see, build like a fence gate or something. But uh, see, look at all these guys. And then you hit R twice and everyone that was around dies and we just all fine and dandy. I try to make this room as spacious as possible. So, um, you know, they, they feel like spawning here. Ow, bitch. See, they'll, they'll spawn inside of you sometimes and that's when you get hit. Do uh do axes take down their fences faster? Because I feel like a pickaxe does it just as fast. I don't know. I've always used a pickaxe. I always assumed they were made out of stone anyway, so. I still hear blazes above me too though. Which is not a good sign, because we want them to be in here. Oh, here we go. Party's up here. So basically, if you don't want to aim, you just go into the group and just hit R a few times, and then you're good to go. So let's, um, we have nine blaze rods on us, and we already got over half a stack. Which is uh, awesome. I'm very happy with. In fact, I'm going to stay here and try to get about two and a half stacks of, uh, of blaze rods and experience, because it's helpful, you know. No one, uh, no one hates experience. In fact, I'm going to make this place a little bit more friendly for them. So they can fly around and do their business. And, uh, anyways, I'm going to make another cut here, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Won't take that long. Uh, at least be here as long as my bread will hold me. And, uh, see you guys in, a, in, in, in just a flash of a second. In fact, uh, just, uh, hello future, say hello to future me for me. Do, do that. Do that much. Be like, hello, future Dwight. How, how are you? I'm doing good. That's good. How's your family? Everything's all right. Okay, so here we are back at the base. Getting, uh, getting prepped to make the, uh, the little machine. Uh, I came out with about two and a half stacks of blaze rods, which should be plenty. Um, I don't think I'll, I'll need any more than that. Um, mainly because I'm only going to be using them basically for ender chests, and other than that... I don't really see a huge use for them in my personal playthrough. I mean, there may be recipes later on where maybe this copper electron tube needs it. But uh, if not, you know, whatever. Uh, I, as you can see, there's, there's a little bit of extra work done here because uh, I did about 10 minutes of work or so before realizing that um, it wasn't recording. I just kind of went in. I was like, all right, so here we go. Got all this shit and junk. and So basically what you guys missed... I made an electrical engine, which I actually need to keep on me, and uh, and a deployer. Other than that, I just gathered all the stuff that was um, from the nether, bringing it back over here. And uh, basically, the way this is going to work, we're going to be using a deployer, which is from Red Power 2, um, which will right-click basically, not basically, it'll right-click whatever item is inside of the thing. So if I have a redstone torch in there, it'll right-click it when, um, when I... Uh, apply redstone thing to it. So boop, there you go. A little redstone torch. I didn't even know it was actually going to do that. <laughs> I didn't think it could actually place things, but um, so yeah, it'll right click whatever's in its inventory to its adjacent block or further if it has a special item in there such as the volcanic amulet. Now what I'm going to be doing is putting a uh, client star, very small client star inside of this thing and every time I, I give it power it's going to activate the amulet, which in return gives me lava source blocks which is going to be very helpful because I'm going to automate my system here so I only want two blocks of it so I, I took it up one charge so there you go just one little charge and we're gonna just keep that in there just to um, just so it stays out of my inventory basically and uh, I have I've already picked up my two geothermal generators and covered up the floor again um, because I don't want to look at them, because there's going to be no reason to. So let's get our pump, 
and uh, where is it? I need some stone. I'm gonna put that there and our pump. And uh, let's put like two redstone engines on it. Not gonna really need any more um, because it doesn't it doesn't need a whole lot. Uh, I'm only being pumping up a little bit at a time, and eventually it'll stockpile itself and actually suck up more than it needs. So we'll get that going. But as you can see, the pump isn't actually lowering its arm because it doesn't sense any any liquid underneath it. So what we're gonna do is take out our little amulet here and put those two there and now it knows that there's liquid there and it will lower its arm then we need to get our redstone wires here in fact I'm only gonna take it to right here because um, I'm gonna be putting a timer on it which is going to uh, automate this to only deploy every few seconds so now that we got that set up we need our bottler which is in my bag I think still it's a green, green little thing. It says bottler on it. Do I? What happened to my bottler? It's not in here. Did it get destroyed? What happened to it? Down a bottler, and I don't know what happened to it. Hmm. Okay, give me a second, guys, and I'll see if I left it somewhere. Hmm. Okay, so I can't find it, so we're just going to make another one. It's real easy. It's just a sturdy machine with some glass and cans around it. So I already have sturdy machines made, so let's request one of those. Um, let's do 310, and I think it was 4 glass, right? I'm pretty sure we'll just request that. There's my glass. Okay, so uh, actually we need to make our cans first. So there we go. I got our cans and um, glass around it like that. And bam, we got our bottler. So there we go. We got that. We need some golden waterproof pipes. We're going to put that there and then our bottler right there. And as you can see, it's immediately pumping lava in because it uh, has some stored inside of its buffer there and it's already out which is fine so there we go uh, this is going to need to pump into something else which is going to be this chest right here now this chest is going to act as a buffer um, between uh, this and the two geothermal generators which I'll probably put right here because they actually need to have items pumped into the bottom of them uh, for them to go into the bottom slot I could probably use sneaky pipes, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, electrical engine is another thing in forestry which converts industrial craft energy to build craft energy. So you can take energy from this line source right here, the glass fiber from our wonderful MFE and transfer it into one of these types of engines, uh, power. Which is uh, something which is very nice. In fact, I'm going to use it right here to power this machine. Uh, in fact, I can probably put that right there, save myself some time, and, um, okay, that has to be there. I guess it doesn't have to be there, um, but it, it's fine because I'm going to be covering this wall up, like, right here anyways. So let's actually put that up so we know where we're at, uh, so when I'm wiring things, uh, I can kind of keep it close-knit. Thank you. 